and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here is an action RPG that I made entirely using visual scripting. It features a player with multiple weapons, so there's melee and projectiles, it's got coins, keys and doors, there's dungeons to explore and lots of pots to smash. And again, all of it without writing a single line of code. This is an excellent project that really showcased the power of visual scripting and how you can really build anything you want with it. Here I will do an overview for how all of this was made entirely using visual scripting, but if you want the complete step-by-step -step guide, then check out my visual scripting course. This is just one of the three games made in that course. The others are a simple platformer and a really nice FPS. All games start completely from scratch and go step-by-step -step until the final polished games. In total, the course is 20 hours long and it will take you from beginner to advanced. It will teach you everything you need to know on how to make games using only visual scripting. Go check it out to see this game being built step-by-step. Okay, so here let's play the final game and then we're going to analyze the project and see how all of these visual scripts are working together. As I said, this is a fully featured RPG, so it's got all of the mechanics you would expect. It's got multiple weapons, keys, doors, enemies, dungeons, objectives, health, coins, shops, and so on. So we start off on a very basic main menu and here we see all of the game controls, all of it pretty simple. So we've got an attack, the ability to fire some arrows, use up a shield to block enemy attacks, interact with various kinds of objects and buttons, and have a really nice dash. So we just go ahead and hit on play, and right away we are spawned inside of our world. So we have the player character and we can move around it. As you can see, the world itself is composed of a bunch of really nice tiles. The player also correctly identifies collisions, so I cannot go through solid objects. Then there's a really nice dash to quickly move in one direction. There's obviously sword attacks and the ability to fire some arrows. And the arrows themselves, they reload over time, so there they are. I can fire all three, then I gotta wait for them to reload and fire them more. Now in the UI, we can see the current health as our hearts, as well as the current number of coins and our star fragments, which is the goal of the game. For the enemies, down there we see a really nice melee enemy. He is currently in the patrol state, so just moving between his various patrol points. And if I approach, yep, there you go, he sees me and he starts chasing. Now, if he goes, if I get within range, yep, there you go, I take some damage. But if I use my real nice shield, yep, there you go. And I can obviously hit the enemy. Now that I took some damage, I can go ahead, pick up this coin, that's nice. Pick up that one, and yep, there you go. So now there's this one. Now let's attack him. So if I just get within, and boom, there you go. All right, so those are the enemies. Then up here, some really nice pots to smash. So just smash them and get tons of coins. Then down here, a portal. So a really nice. And I go in, yep, I get teleported into the portal. And over here we've got an example of a shop. So this one takes 50 gold, which obviously I do not have, so that is why I cannot open the door in order to buy the item. So I can go and teleport back onto into the main world. The world itself is pretty massive, so there's all kinds of things everywhere. So over here, tons more coins, tons more enemies. I constantly have to attack them. And again, all of this without writing a single line of code. So all of this is being run just based on visual scripts. Over here, real nice chest, so I can just smack it and get tons of coins. Really awesome. And over here is a different door. This one requires the red key, so I gotta find that one. And go inside a different dungeon. And the dungeons have that really nice moving lava, and they're all pretty different. And over here is the red key, and I can pick it up. Then over there is one of the star fragments, so that's the goal of the game, to collect all of them. And if I go in, this one actually has a trap, so a bunch of enemies get spawned, and I have to somehow survive. There's also some buttons that I can interact with, so for example, open and close the door. The logic for that is really general, so it works with just about anything, as I'll see in a bit. And there's also some upgrades over here if I pick it up. Yep, now I've got a maximum hearts of four. All right, so there's only one more star fragment left. And this one happens to be behind this shop. And to go into the shop, I just need to have enough gold. Then approach, and there you go, the door opens. And I can go in and open up. And there you go, you win. All right, so that's the game. As you can see, this really is a fully featured RPG. And again, everything you see here works entirely using visual scripting. So there's no written code anywhere. Let's explore the project to see how all of this is set up. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. So here I am with the editor window open. So for example, let's inspect how the player works. So here is the player game object, and you can see all the components attached to it. 
So for example, you see tons of variables that are required to make all of this work, as well as multiple separate flow machines. That's one of the very important things, is how you can have multiple flow machines on a single object so you can keep all your logic nicely separate. Then some scripts are pretty massive, like for example this one. This is the main player script, so as you can see, very, very massive. But again, it is actually quite readable thanks to all of these nice groups. So if you take the time to properly organize your logic, then all of this can actually be quite manageable. So for example, for handling the player attack, over here we go into the input manager, we listen to an event that happens when the player presses the attack input, we set a trigger on the animator to play a certain animation, then do a whole bunch of things like play some sound, we generate a bit of screen shake, we spawn some sword slash particles and so on. Then we do a circle cast to identify all the hits of the objects that can be damaged, and if so, then they are damaged, try to give a knockback to the object and so on. So as you can see, it's a pretty massive script, but thanks to the groups, everything is nicely separated. There's also some scripts that are reused. So for example, here we've got the health system. We can look at it and see, yep, we have a maximum amount of health. We have an event listening to take some damage, another one to heal, check if it is a full health, check to add some health amount max, and so on. So this is the health system, which is on the player, and it is the one that is also placed on the enemy. So the enemy itself, over here, it also has the exact same health system script. So being able to reuse scripts is something you should always try to do. It will greatly increase your productivity. Then the enemies also use a very nice visual scripting feature, which is over here, the state machine. This is a really awesome built-in feature. You can define the various states and all of the conditions for swapping between them. So it's a really awesome way to handle all of the states. Like for example, over here, it's very easy to see what this is doing. We've got a patrol state, then we've got a chase state and a attack state and the connections between them which handle all of the various conditions. So for example, he's on patrol, and on patrol he's doing all of this logic, again with groups to make everything nice and easy to understand, so it constantly cycles through all of the patrol positions. Then on the condition to change from patrol into chase, over here it simply grabs the player, it does a vector 3 distance, it checks if it is within the player detection radius, if so then it triggers the transition. So then it goes into chase, then again checks if it is within attack range, and if so plays the animation and so on. So the state machine is a really awesome, easy to use feature. Another thing the game has is some nice custom shaders made in Shadowgraph. For example, when the enemies get spawned, they have a really nice effect. I actually covered that effect in a separate video previously. It's a simple dissolve shader, which works great as a spawning effect. The grass is also swaying in the wind. So that's another effect that I covered in a separate video. Then over here, everything's nicely organized with a whole bunch of spawner scripts. So for example, here the coin spawner script. This is what it's called whenever the chest takes damage, so whenever it takes damage it spawns a coin, so that's what it does, simply goes into this script, fires off a function, which instead it instantiates a prefab, and adds some velocity just to make it look a bit nice. So there's all these spawners, and all of those references are stored over here on the scene variables. So this is an easy way to access the references for all these objects in order to be able to fire off events to do pretty much anything. So despite the fact that this project is pretty huge, it is very well organized, which makes it quite easy to work with. One interesting system is the key door system. So for example, the way that works is over here, this script is on the player and it is listening to trigger collisions. When a collision happens, it checks the layer for that object. That's how it identifies what object did it collide with. So it checks if the layer is on the keys, then this one collided with the key. And if so, the way that the system works is it simply has a variable of type key list and simply adds this key onto that list. So over here on the variables, over here, the player has a key list, which is just a list of game objects. So as the player picks up keys, they get added onto this list. And then there's the doors, which again work pretty much the exact same way. So on trigger enter, so when it collides with an object, it identifies if it is door. If so, then checks if the player contains the key that is matched up to that door. And if so, then it simply opens that door. So for example, over here is the red door. As you can see, it has the physics collider, so that one is blockable, as well as the trigger collider, which is a bit bigger. So when the player enters into this area, it goes inside and checks the variables for this door, and it sees if it has this key, then it checks if the player also has this key, if so, then it opens this door. So it's a really interesting system, and again, not a single line of code here. Then for another interesting system are the interactable buttons. So on the player over here, there's another group for the interact. So it goes into the input manager, listens to the interact event. When that happens, it does a physics overlap circle, it checks out for objects within the button layer, and if it finds something, then it triggers a interact event on that object. 
So this works with buttons, but also with really just about anything. That's the interesting thing about events in visual scripting, which is you're not directly calling a function, you're just firing off an event, and if that object is listening to that particular event, then it can run some logic. So it makes it possible to make some really modular code. So for example, up here is this button, and on the button, it has a toggle button flow machine. So what this one does is it receives the interact event that is fired by the player. It triggers its own event for the toggle button, since this is a toggle button. And then it just handles all the logic for inverting the button state. It updates the visual. And then in this case, this is a very general script. So this one simply fires off another event, which in this case, that event is over here stored as a variable. So it goes into this target object, which is the door. So it's this door and fires off this event, which is set door open state. So by the player interacting with this button, it will open up this door. And as you can see, all of the logic is completely separated. So this basic logic for an interaction system, this works with just about anything you want to do with it. So you can open doors, disable some cannons, spawn some enemies, anything you want. Then for the map visuals, it's using the built-in Unity tile map. So it places all of the background objects, then all of the objects on top, so all of the grass, ground, and so on. Then a whole bunch of them for the colliders, and so on. And if I zoom all the way out, I can see this is the main world, and then down here onto the side are all of the various dungeons. So when the player enters into a portal, it simply gets teleported onto one of these positions. And the UI itself is also nicely decoupled from the rest of the logic. Again, it's using events, which is essential in visual scripting to make all of this work. So for example, over here, the health UI, it has this graph, which as you can see, it simply listens to an event on the player. So the player fires off an event when the health amount changes. And then the UI simply handles the logic in order to showcase and update the visuals. So there it is, just updating all of the full hearts or empty hearts. And all of the input logic is abstracted away onto a separate input system. So thanks to how all of this is set up, it is very simple to make this game work with a keyboard or with touch input or with a mouse or with a controller or really with anything. So this project is an excellent example of just how much you can build with visual scripting alone. The game is pretty complex, packed with tons of features, and all of it works perfectly without having to write a single line of code. And as I mentioned, all of this was built from scratch step by step in my complete visual scripting course. So if you want to learn how you can build this, go ahead and check it out. This is just one of the three games made in that course. The others are the simple platformer and a really nice FPS. All games start completely from scratch and go step by step until the final polished games. In total, the course is 20 hours long, and it will take you from beginner to advanced. It will teach you everything you need to know on how to make games using only visual scripting. Go check it out to see this game being built step by step. Alright, hope that's useful, check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.